The C++ language gives us the ability to make our own types. As programmers, we can define types as we see fit. In addition to that, we have the capability to define a type which contains a collection of different types. So we can put several things together into one unit, and we can call that a structure. So this is the first time that we've seen anything like this. Previously, when we declared a variable, it had to be an integer, a float, a double, or if we declared an array of strings or floats or integers, then every element of that variable or every element of that array, they all had to be the same type. Well, here is the first time that we can do something that gets us away from that restriction. When we declare structures, we place them above the main program in the global area like we do with enumerated types and function prototypes. So let's start by looking at the definition of a structure, and we will paste in this line of code here to begin with. When you are declaring a structure, then we have the uh, C++ reserved word struct that we put in front, and then we can name it anything that we want. So that identifier is up to us. We can pick whatever, whatever we want to put there. Then, after that, we have a set of curly braces. So we put in the curly braces, and within those curly braces, we can identify elements that go with the structure. Now, we can make those anything that we want, and they can be of different types. So let's build up this structure, and let's put in a couple of strings. This is going to be a student record structure, so we, we need a collection of information relative to our student. So we can declare within our structure the variable first name, the variable last name, and we also specify what type they are. So we have a string first name and a string for last name. Now, in addition to that, let's get some other information about our uh, student. So we can get some additional variables, and we can put those in here. And here is the example. Uh, suppose we want to have the grade point average, so we can add that in. And if we want to have some variables for, say, our exam average and our homework average, we can put that in here as well. And we can also have the, uh, the uh, grade here. So when you are declaring a structure, it's up to you as a programmer to decide what elements that you want to put in your student record or any other record for that matter. And you, in, at the end, you can close off the, uh, by the block of code that makes your structure with that closing curly brace and a semicolon. So now we have this brand new thing, this structure, and it contains a variety of elements and they, are of, they can be of different types, and of course, uh, they can, uh, well, they can be different types, right? That's all we really need here. Now, in the example that we have, I want to also include an enumerated type in here. So we will kind of combine this with the enumeration that we saw in previous videos. So I'm going to define an enumerated type, which is going to be a letter grade. So we have enum followed by the name of this enumerated type, and then we just have the letters A, B, C, D, and F, which are typical grades, and that will make up our enumerated type. That is a user-defined type. Student record, that is also a user-defined type. But we can, we can include one inside another. So if we wanted to, then we could put in a letter grade as part of this structure, and we can put that here, we could call that our grade type, and the uh, that would be the type, grade type, which is the enumerated uh, identifier up here. And the actual variable is called letter grade. Now, I'm mentioning variables because these look a lot like variables. Okay, we have the type, and we have a variable name. Okay, here's another. We have a type, unsigned integer. We have a variable name. That's what that looks like. But it's very important that you remember that this entire thing is a type. It is not a variable. We will have to declare variables to be of this type in order to use them. So we are talking about user-defined types. And here we have two examples of those. 
we have the enumerated type, grade type, and we have the structure type, student record. So here then is the syntax of how you declare a structure. Define, I guess you, I should say, how you define a structure. And whenever you are defining these structures, then it's a good idea to try to keep together things that belong within a group. You don't want to try to mix things up that belong to different groups. And we'll see this as we go further with additional um, examples of structures. But clearly, all of these things would be part of a student record. And, of course, we could put uh, many more items in here, in here as well if we wanted to. So there, that is how you declare a structure. Well, how do you use it then? Well, in order to use this type, we need to have a variable that is of that type. So we need to declare variables of the type student record. And here is how we can do that. I'm going to use this new type that I just defined, student record, and I'm going to use that to declare variables Alice and Bob. Now, Bob and Alice are going to have all of the elements that are in, included in the student record. So they're going to have the first name, last name, GPA, all that stuff. So all those things will belong to both Alice and for Bob. Now, in the um, outline program that we have here, you can see I've got several C out statements. Enter the student data for Alice. And we are going to add code that will populate this particular data item. So we want to populate the data for Alice. And Alice contains all of those things up there. All right, well, how do we do that? What is the syntax that we use for that? So we're going to prompt enter the first name for Alice. Okay, so in order to uh, enter the first name into this record, this data structure, this um, for Alice, then we can just directly read that in. So we would type it in from the keyboard. So we need a CN statement for that. And here's what the CN statement looks like. Now, notice the dot. Okay, we use the dot notation to pick out the elements that are within a structure definition. So Alice, she is a type student record. Within the student record, we have all of these different fields, okay, all these different elements. So in order to pick out a particular one, we use the dot notation. So this would populate the first name element in the record for Alice called first name. All right. Now, if we wanted to continue, and you've, you've seen the solution here, we use the dot notation for this. If we want to enter the last name, well, that's also the same thing. We can read that directly in from the keyboard, or we could set it with, a, with an assignment statement if you wanted to. But we're going to type this data in. So to enter the last name, we just use Alice.LastName. And then we can continue from there. So whatever field we want, then we just use the dot notation, and we just put that directly in there. So I got the wrong line this time here, so let's, let's take that one out, and let's put this one in. So here we go, then. Alice first name, Alice last name, Alice grade point average. We just read all those things in. And we can continue to do that. We just got the exam average. If we want to read that in, so we can put that here. And then if we want to get the homework average, then we can get we can read that with the CN statement, and we can put that here. So the way that we access the data elements is to just use this dot notation. Now, um, we have some additional things that we did not include. You know, we didn't handle the, the grade. We didn't handle the letter grade just yet. But let's go ahead and let's compile the program, and let's see if this much of it works. Now, we're not printing out anything just yet. We just, we just want to make sure that we are importing the information correctly from the keyboard. So let's compile the program and try it out. Let's look at the output. We're just being prompted to type in some data. So let's type in some data. If uh, we want to type in data for Alice, I suppose. Her name is Alice, so we'll enter that. Can I make the last name? And let's just put in some made up information here. Grade point average, 3.4. Uh, exam average, let's suppose that's an 89. Homework average is a 92, and then we're good to go. 
So that much works. We didn't print out the data, but we did input everything. So now you can see that if you want to populate the data for something of a record type, that is, I'm sorry, a structure type, then you can do that by using the dot notation, and you do have to read in the data for each item that's in your structure. Now, we're not quite finished yet. We have to compute the grade down here, and we need to do something about this letter grade thing, too. So let's go ahead and let's finish putting the data in for Alice by, first of all, computing a grade for that, for, get for her. Now, let's make it simple. We will just put in, say, we have uh, for, uh, for the grade, we're just going to have, say, 80% is going to be the exam and 20% will be the homework. So let's put in a line of code to do a computation for that. And here it is. And you can see the assignment statement that we have here. The grade will be computed from some exam average times the homework average. And like I said, let's say 80% of the score is from the exams and 20% is from homework. So that's how we get that. But in order to set the grade part for Alice, we have to use the dot notation for that. So we have Alice.grade that picks out that particular element. Grade picks that out from the, from the structure. And we compute it by taking the exam score and the homework score. And those we entered up here already. Right? So we did, we did the exam, we did the homework. So taking those numbers, then we can do the computation and we set the grade here for Alice. Now, there's one, one more thing we need to do. We need to take into account that letter grade. So let's see how we can do that. Now, recall with an enumerated type, then the only values that we can have for anything that's a grade type are the letters A, B, C, D, and F. And that's what we have here, this letter grade. Okay, so that variable, it can only contain the elements of the structure that we see up here. All right, so how do we set that? Well, we have to figure out what the letter grade is. So let's, let's go ahead and we, let's do some if statements. And we'll start out like this. We'll use our if statement. Okay, so if Alice.grade, again, notice the dot notation here. So if the grade that we just computed, if it's greater than or 90, then that's going to be the letter A. Then we just need to have our else if clause for all of the other possibilities. So we can put those in, and we just have a sequence of, of the else if statements. So else if the grade is greater than or equal to 80 and it's less than 90, then that's going to be B. So you can see that we're putting in those identifiers, A and B, that come out of the enumerated type. We're putting them in to Alice's record under the element letter grade. So that's how we're setting this letter grade field here of the structure. All right, so now let's get the rest of the uh, uh, else statements for that. So I'll just finish uh, filling out this thing. So now we have the letter grade, if it's greater than or equal to 70, if it's less than 80, that would be a C. And if it's greater than or equal to 60 and less than 70, that's a D. And anything else will be a failing score, so we get an F there. So that sequence of if statements is what we use to give a value to the letter grade field or element of our structure up here. So that's how we get that. Now we have populated all of the information for Alice and we're ready to print out the data record for Alice down here at the bottom. Well, you know how we can access the elements, so it's pretty easy. You can guess what we're going to do. We just need some C out statements for that. So let's print out the first name and the last name and we'll separate it with a space in the middle. So we just access Alice's data by using the dot notation again. So we print out the first name, a space, and the last name. Then we'll have the end line. So this whole thing goes on one line. Then we print out the other information the same way. So let's add the C out statements to do that. And we will print out this string to begin with so we identify what each of the items are. Each one is, I guess. So we have the GPA, we have the exam, we have the homework. So we'll print that out. And then we'll use the dot notation to go in and extract Alice's data for the grade.
grade point average, exam, homework, grades. So we have all that. That's easy. Then the hard part will be to uh, print out the enumerated type here for the letter grade. And if you will remember from our videos where we did the enumeration type, then we had to have a, a uh, switch statement or some kind of function to do that. So I'm not going to make it a function this time, but I will use the uh, switch statement like I've shown in previous videos. So we are going to do a switch on Alice.LetterGrade. Okay, so we did set that up here. Okay, that sequence of if statements, we use that to set the letter grade. So it will be A, B, C, D, or an F. All right, so that is what we did to set the letter grade. Now we want to print out whatever it is that we calculated. So we uh, calculated the grade here, and now we are going to print out the letter grade part of Alice's structure. So the switch in parentheses will use the Alice.LetterGrade. That will be either A, B, C, D, or F. We have a case for each one of those. If it's A, then we will print out letter A, and then we'll do the break over here. So the only thing that this switch statement does is it picks out the letter grade, and if it's an A, a B, a C, D, or F, then it prints out the corresponding string, the letter grade, and whatever that is over here. So that's what this does. So again, you can tell that these enumerated types are not really made for input and output. We have to do special considerations for that. Now, uh, that should let us see everything that's in Alice's record. So let's compile the program and run it. I'll bring over the output window. And I've already typed in the information for Alice. So I have the first name, last name, last name grade point average, exam homework. So I've put all that in. Now, I'll hit the Enter key. And we did go ahead and uh, our program calculated the grade and it did the letter grade part for us. Now we want to print out everything. So here, then you can see all of the output. Here's the data record. So Alice Simmons, we have that first name and last name, both on the same line. So that's how I set that up. And then we'll print out all of those other parts. Okay, so we'll print out the grade point average here, the exam, the homework, the grade, 89.6, and we get the letter grade that comes out nicely as a B. So that worked out as well. Now, I guess in reality, you know, that would, uh, 89.6, that would round up to a 90. So I think she'd probably get an A here. But at any rate, you get the idea, right? We get the uh, all the elements of that structure. They're all printed out right there. So we get all of Alice's data. And by using a structure, we can consolidate all of this related information together into a unit. And we call that unit a structure. The last thing I want to show in this program is something else that might come in handy not only here but in, in other programs that you might run and that's called uh, that's going to use the size of function so it's going to tell us how big something is and it really comes into play nicely here when we start working with structures so let's take a look at what that is so let's put a line of code down here at the very bottom and what I want to show you is the size of function Okay, now don't confuse that with size. We saw size a while back when uh, we were working with strings, and just size gives you how large a string is. The size of function is going to give you how many bytes a particular variable is, is going to be. All right, so it doesn't matter what variable you have here. You can put a float, a double, an integer, whatever you want, and this will give you how many bytes of storage that takes. So in this case, we're going to get the number of bytes that are required to store the entire structure for Alice. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, compile this program and run it, and let's see how big that structure is. Let's bring over the output, and again, I've already entered the name and the other information, so I'll just hit Enter, and then we can see the rest of the output. So let's scroll down a little bit there so you can see the last thing, the size of. And you can see that the size of the structure is 76 bytes. So that's quite a bit, isn't it? That's a pretty big uh, area of memory. We need to store all of that information, but that's how big it is. And sometimes it's useful to know exactly you know, how much space does this structure take up in memory. 
The other thing we can do with the size of is we can look at each individual item. So let's look at each of the elements of the structure for Alice and let's print out the size of those things. Let's look at the name first. So let's print out the size of the first name and the last name. So I'm leading off with this string that is indicating just you know what, it, what is the thing I'm printing out so we can see that on the screen. Then uh, we will do the size of function and then we will get the particular field. We'll get the element of the structure, first name and last name. So we'll print those out. Now as it turns out with strings, the system's always going to allocate a certain default size for that. So even though Alice is only going to have five letters in her name, then the system's probably going to allocate 15 or so characters for that. At any rate, let's see what we get. Let's look at the output window. And once again, I've already typed in the data. So here is the output that we get when I hit the Enter key. So now, uh, let's see if I can fit this over here. So we can see that the size of the entire structure is 76 bytes, and the system is allocated for this string first name 28 bytes. And as I said earlier, whenever you're dealing with a uh, string type, the system is going to al allocate some extra space for the, the string itself. All right, so we get 28 bytes, and your system might be different. If you have a different kind of computer, you might get different numbers here. So at any rate, for my computer using Microsoft Visual Studio, then I get 28 bytes allocated for first name and last name. Well, let's continue with this and let's print out all the rest of the stuff that goes into the uh, structure for Alice. So I'll paste that line or those lines into our program here. And I need to modify things a little bit. I put a semicolon over there and I need to take that off. So I have one big C out statement that will print out everything else. So let's just look at that. All right. So we will there's, notice that there's an end line, but there's no semicolon until we get to the very end down here. So that whole thing is one big C out statement. But it does print things out on the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different lines when we get to the screen because of the end lines you have here. So we just use the dot notation again. So we did the first name and last name. So we'll get the size of the GPA. Okay, grade point average, the size of the exam, and the homework, and all that. And if you look back, when we uh, defined our structure, that we had a float. I'm expecting that to be four, four bytes. Okay, the same thing, unsigned integers, those are four. And the float here, that's four. And I expect this thing to be just one character. All right, but we'll know for sure when we run the program. Because the size of function then will give us how big each element of that structure is. Okay, so let's compile it and run it one more time. And the result that we have is shown here. And again, I've typed in some data. I'll hit Enter, and now you can see the size of each of the things that we have stored. Okay, so I was uh, correct for most of them. But at the very bottom, this letter grade, it actually turned out to be four bytes after all. So I was uh, not correct in guessing that one. Okay, so the first name and last name, we have 28. We saw that before. Everything else is going to occupy four bytes. Okay, so we had that float for grade point average, unsigned integer for the exam, the homework. We got a float here for the grade. And I'm expecting those to be four. And as it turns out, this enumerated type is also going to occupy four bytes. So I guess I should really have known that because it's going to be an integer value anyway. All right, then that is is all I wanted to show you with this program, and this introduces structures. So you can see, hopefully, that this now opens up, you know, an entirely new venue for you. You no longer have to have variables that contain just one thing, just an integer or just a float. And if you have an array of things, then they don't all have to be the same type. We will see in upcoming videos that we can make arrays of structures as well as just having a simple variable like Bob and Alice here. So these are going to really open up our capabilities in terms of programming. So uh, that, I think, will do it. Poor Bob, we didn't give him any data this time. We didn't, didn't let Bob have any information at all, but we'll get to Bob a little bit later. So once again, when you, are wanting, when you want to make a structure, then follow this syntax, struct 
you pick the name you want here, student record. It could be anything you want it to be. Then enclosed within the curly braces, you can list as many things as you want. And we are going to call these things, I mean, I give them a lot of different names. I call them items. I call them elements. But um, properly, I should call them elements of the structure. So I'll try to be consistent with that. These are elements of the structure. Okay, uh, we will continue with other examples in upcoming videos, but uh, let's close this one for now. Well, actually, we'll, we'll close it for good, okay? All right, so that's it.